Hello and welcome to Swiftly Spoken, a fan-made Taylor Swift podcast in which we break down her lyrics, deep dive into full album retrospectives, and theorise about what may be coming next. As always, we are your hosts, Cameron and Lisa, and in this episode, we're going to be compiling a playlist of 13 songs that we think should be essential listening before the Torture Poets department comes out in under a month's time. So to kind of start the episode, um, if you've been a long-time listener, you might potentially remember a previous episode that we did where basically before the release of Midnight's we looked at essential songs that we think that people should listen to before they then explore Midnight's or just Taylor's general discography and basically we're kind of basing this episode off of that episode but that episode itself was based off and inspired by an article that was written for the conscience of sound it was part of their 10 song series where they provide like a list of 10 songs from popular artists catalogues and that kind of act as like a doorway into the artist vast discographies and we kind of looked at that list analyzed it and then provided our own and our list well my one kind of explored like taylor's countryside of her music and looking at Taylor's country kind of sensibilities and sound and songwriting throughout her career and Lisa's was kind of showing off like Taylor's songwriting skills and ability again throughout her career but this one is slightly different and what we're going to be doing is recommend 13 songs that we think hint towards the stories that will be told on the Tortured Poets department as well as the themes of the album or just the general vibes this is kind of like a preview of what we believe is potentially coming sonically thematically and kind of lyrics potentially or previous references that Taylor might make to previous songs or stories that she's told throughout her music. Yeah, it'd be like a recap of everything you need to know in her discography before you delve into this new album, very much related to what we think is going to be presented to us. Which, you know, we could be way off base, but these are our our 13 predictions anyway. Definitely. And kind of just jumping back quickly, if you are interested in listening to the episode that we made before Midnight's came out and you want to kind of hear our selections of songs, then make sure to check out that episode. We'll link it on the screen now. So I guess now we can get into the specifics of the 13 songs that we have chosen together. We basically compiled two lists and then chose the ones that we both included, which they were a few that we we knew were staples on this list and then went through most of Taylor's discography to kind of get our head around what we think would be a good representation of what we think we're going to see basically. Firstly I think as a disclaimer we should mention that in the end we haven't really included very much if anything from her first shall we say five albums. We've based a lot of this on what what we think is going to be told to us story-wise, narrative, songwritery wise and parallels for lyrics right and from the country era from 1989 i don't think there's going to be much to parallel with although we have got like one or two in there that we will explain why we have added then from reputation onwards we have added about two at least from every album just because it makes sense right lyrically Yes. Thematically, that's what we kind of want to explore in this list. In no particular order, the first one that we both included, so we knew it had to be here, is Delicate. I think Delicate is an extremely interesting song to listen to because I think there's a few of these songs on this list that I'm going to say this with, but it's going to give a bit of whiplash, really, isn't it? Yeah, the kind of promise you know and the the hopes and also fears were either shattered or kind of did come true and we're Mm. kind of gonna it's almost like this is the start of the circle and potentially some of the stuff that is explored on torture poets will kind of round off the circle and finish it off and we'll kind of you know tie tie the story together basically Mm. and finish it off really which is quite sad but i do think that Mm. what's interesting with delicate though is that even though obviously it's coming from maybe a more positive time there is also still a sense of like uncertainty and like is it cool that i said that like you know do the girls back home touch you like i you know this there is still this fear of like how is it gonna be like is this gonna work Mm. yes 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 definitely it's like anxiety is like almost like the core theme throughout that whole song and it's you know at a time when her relationship uh, her sorry reputation was kind of obviously on the back foot she was very much in a very vulnerable situation and also it, so not only is does it kind of explore the potential fears that might have come true but also right. it is naturally kind of chapter one of the story really isn't it yeah 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 i think that's why it deserves a place on this list also it's just a very very good song <laughs> yeah it's just it, it extremely visual in the sense that you can you can hear it's someone who is extremely scared of of everything that, but also hopeful very hopeful as well so that's why i think maybe a little bit of whiplash with this song perhaps definitely 
and I think also with Delicate as well, it kind of starts off the theme of blue. Like, oh, interesting. Um, blue That's is something true. that it's like a color very that important Taylor, color. Mm. Mm, yeah, regularly references when she is singing about that time in her life. So I think that's also interesting. And I'm not sure if potentially that might be something that the colour might either change or it might have a sadder tone of blue. I, I'm not sure how it's going to work out. But mm. that colour was first mentioned there and kind of across reputation, but also took centre stage, really. Yeah, and the there's going to be a, a so few of the songs. Of mm, there's going to be a few of the songs on this list that we can kind of pick out that reference to blue. And if not those mm. songs, very, very similar songs or ones that we may have added but we didn't choose to in the end for example cruel summer it was another candidate to be in on this list to be honest with you and it is very similar to delicate in lots of ways as it is a confession of a lot of anxiety like is it cool that i said all that and uh, ain't that the worst thing you ever heard it's just is it similar like oh sorry (laughs) sorry i like you which is an interesting way to start off this theme really if you think about it delving deeper into that i think this next choice is a very heavy one as well and this one is one that I could only hope personally that perhaps sonically as well it could make a little bit of an appearance but judging that we kind of know that the Torture Poets department is going to be pop and we kind of know that Jack Antonoff is going to be a big part of it I'm not sure how much she's going to lean into more of this indie kind of sound Folky it's, sound. it's yeah. very difficult to tell but anyway Peace is next on our list and right off the bat when your Cascade Ocean Wave Blues come yes I was just about to say that yes here's another yeah. blue mention mm-hmm. so as for Peace I think it's an important one on the list just because again it's a big question she's asking in Peace and I think this album is going to give us an answer to it like would it be enough if I could never give you Peace it reminds me yeah. also of anti-hero it reminds me of all of these feelings that i think may be explored as well that are very much related to fame how she is perceived yeah. in the world and how that can yeah. affect how other people in her personal life may perceive her as well yeah the kind of larger than life character of like what i am is larger than me as a human and i can't control mm. she can't control being taylor swift the pop star and what comes with that and yeah and i feel like that is potentially as you said like explored on anti-hero and i think that it will be something that is potentially referenced on torture poets as well and i think this is this is the first time that we really really saw taylor being like look i i just can't ever control this like mm. and would the things that i can control and the things i can give you be enough to stay in the relationship and as you said this whole song is basically a question and i think like you said potentially we might find the answer and i don't think it'll be a good one yeah i'm even thinking that an interesting parallel between what you just said like this larger than life which is very much presented in anti-hero as taylor the giant taking up so much mm. room and so much kind of like the elephant in the room is herself it's an interesting yeah. parallel and like juxtaposition to the smallest man who ever lived could yes that, could that yes. somehow be connected that's an interesting one i think so potentially yes mm. potentially that that kind kind of difference Taylor felt she was this kind of elephant in the room in comparison to like the person she was in a relationship with being this mouse and she is just like terrifying Mm. to them you know it's just too big for Mm. them and they can't cope with that so yeah that is interesting Perhaps. that is a really an interesting parallel next up we have the big one and this is the third one that we both had on our list because i think these these songs are very much again they're big questions that we both mm. think are the opening to the rest of this album from how it has been framed the, the sadness that is presented in the lyrics that we've got from now which is you're losing me we've we've spoken a lot about you're losing me recently yes it just makes sense it is like the prequel of the album for me if there was an intro to the album this would be it in my opinion yes this is this is like the essential pre-listen to torture poets like this is the one that you have to kind of listen to but it is that kind of heartbrokenness of like you're losing me like what are you doing like <laughs> you know what hold on then we find out that obviously she did lose him and mm. but you know the thing of like so long london and things like that there might be other things that she mentions that she's lost as a result of that relationship dying and that Mm. kind of anxiety and fear of it so i think that yeah this is not only potentially sonically but it's also thematically and naturally it also presents a lot of different themes that will be explored once again and also perhaps a lot of the metaphors that we might see which is interesting Mm. because in you you're losing me we do have like 
imagery of like the phoenix and stuff weddings for example yes wedding yes mentions to yeah the, the themes i think yeah mentions to weddings mentions to sickness mentions to like yes. fighting and being in an army which yeah i i think those are the ones that those are the perhaps these images that we might see repeated in a few other songs on this album yeah no i think that's interesting and i think you're correct there that that is something that could be explored and and that might potentially link to some of those like deluxe tracks with like the albatross the black dog things like that those kind of metaphors of like what those animals symbolize with like the phoenix you know like she described herself as like a phoenix constantly having to rise from the ashes which then links back to like look what it made me do almost you know it's like how many more times how many more awful things have to happen to me and i have to keep being like okay cool just keep going keep going and it's almost i think that will potentially lyric to link to the song i can do it with a broken heart right yeah the phoenix thing is very much yeah yeah i I get that like i can i can see that with the broken heart like i'm keeping going basically i'm still doing everything even though i'm absolutely destroyed i'm rising from the the ashes once again while we're on the topic of these different themes or how she may present some aspects lyrically i think the great war is a good one to mention here which we also have on our list yes. because yes. it is literally an exploration of everything but from a much more positive light than you're losing me mm. obviously it's like a very different spin to it but again it uses this very 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 long metaphor of describing the relationship basically or a, or a fight in the relationship as like this proper like battle like a war yeah and you know i'm a soldier you're a soldier we're fighting we take the battle underground wave the white flag so i i don't know if we might see any of that imagery come up again again it's interesting it's interesting because just from the the list of songs that we have from the tortured poets department which are very long names to be honest with you but at the same time they're not giving too much they're just given enough to be very very curious very interesting but they're not revealing anything i don't know Mm. so for example fresh out the salama is a very interesting one to me because it links back to reputation songs and a lot of theme yes. theming in reputation is basically around he can be my jailer you know we can yeah. be a pair of robbers and rob the bank and um, go for a heist Get and that car. comes up again in cowboy like me we're both crooks mm. you know and we're gonna get yes. away with it and now again that seems to be cropping up so another interesting link and i think that could also link to what taylor kind of spoke about in her time person of the year where she was basically like look like you know, at that time she wanted to hide, she wanted to mm. kind of get away, but now she looks back on it and she's never going to get those years back that she hid away from the world. And right. maybe that's kind of what that's referencing. And, you know, at the time that's what she wanted and in reputation, that's, you know, what she, those things she speaks about positively. Whereas now potentially it might be something that she views slightly as a negative, kind of slightly teased in that time person of the year interview, where she kind of was like, I'm not ever going to get that back. You know, I've kind of lost that. And she doesn't really want that anymore. Next up, we have Renegade, which I think is a very, very important piece of the puzzle. To be honest with you, Renegade is an extremely interesting song. I do recommend to go back and listen to it because a lot of people maybe don't have this song as one of their top favourites. It isn't an album song. It is a song from somebody else's music. She is a collaborator on it, but basically it's a very Taylor-centric song. It's very interesting things that she's revealing. And again, when analysed under a different light, obviously back when it was released, I don't know, you don't think too much of some things in it, but when you analyse it under a different light with a different perspective and a lot of these songs or names of these songs in mind it is interesting to see it, it is kind of mm. like a, a warning sign honestly i think also because it was kind of like umbrellaed under like aaron and bonnie Vare's project mm. that like you didn't really think of it as like a autobiographical taylor swift song as such whereas if it had maybe been on evermore or folklore people might have potentially been like oh what is this referencing you know because obviously taylor doesn't actually write about her life like most mus- musicians do whereas i feel like because it was maybe under aaron and bonnie vera it was kind of like oh under the radar a bit more maybe yeah yeah it's, it, it is naturally under the radar in comparison to her kind of album tracks but also maybe not maybe analyzed in the same way that a taylor swift song that is solely her would be and i think yeah looking back on it it's like oh maybe that was potentially revealing something if i had to specifically pinpoint one song that could be related to renegade it's my boy only breaks his favorite toys because it's very much you fire off missiles you're demolishing me perhaps like those kind of lyrics 
remind me maybe of yes. that but again these are only titles we don't know we could be chatting some shit right now but yeah perhaps perhaps i think next up we have a couple from evermore and i think this this couple of songs this pair of songs is very interesting pick and you picked it out so uh, all kudos to you like usually it's me the obsessed <laughs> with evermore person but today it was you so thank you yeah. for this yes <laughs> <laughs> but i think it really shows i really hope that this album does give us which is something that i've mentioned before like the hurting the pain of it all but also the healing which is a very important yes. aspect to a lot of songs a little bit a little bit like eternal sunshine the recent album by Ariana. yes we've got a lot yes you know a mix of things there there's and, a lot of yeah there's a lot of hurt but also from a perspective that's like very much dealt with it done with it content and moved on so i think these two songs explore like the two very different reactions you can have to something so tolerate it is uh the next one on our list and i think tolerate it is such a devastating song and i i yes i hate to think of these songs connecting to it in a way because it's just excruciating to think about having to go through such a horrible horrible experience like that but i also think Mm. that tolerate it is a song that is really really cathartic for a lot of people to be able to sing it on tour to be able to listen to it and like scream the lyrics as well especially that bridge obviously so if there are any songs like tolerate it on the album i do hope it is one of those kind of moments of catharsis where you can just be like no i have broken free i have left us in ruins and and i'm happier for it or i'm i'm distraught over it but perhaps there is a light at the end of the tunnel it's for the better in the end Mm. yeah Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And I, I think that the emotion that's like poured into Tolerate It is definitely something we'll see on Torture Poets. And yeah, and obviously it's, you know, you don't want to have to hear really horridly sad songs from Taylor. Like, obviously you want to hear her being happy. But this Tolerate It is like one of her best in terms of like lyrics and songwriting. And I really hope that we get that also that kind of strength in lyricism as well. And I definitely think we will. I think Tolerate It is a standout in, um, in terms of her lyricism across her discography so fingers crossed we'll get something similar in vain to tolerate it and yeah something with that emotion and like you said something as cathartic and almost like champagne problems you know like mm. taylor loves singing that song and so do fans love hearing it and screaming the bridge so hopefully yeah we get something in that kind of way um as tolerated champagne problems because those songs are like absolute knockout so anything like that would be pretty good and next from evermore again i will never be tired of talking of this song <laughs> it's happiness <laughs> I think this one is a much kinder view of the ending of a relationship in this case that's what happiness presents right it is it kind of goes through all the stages of grieving a relationship feeling angry about people starting up again with other people and and Mm -hmm. looking back and saying you know oh sorry didn't mean that really and then finally reaching that moment of just letting it go and being like i can move on from this now i've healed from this now and it's it's okay it's gonna be okay i'm gonna be okay do you feel like the songs are more like in the moment Mm. like dealing with the emotions in the moment rather than like later on looking back and being like okay that's how i felt but actually, yeah. this is the end result, you know. I feel like, yeah. Because I think even with Midnight, Sailor said that she had to kind of hand that. You have to ha- naturally you have to hand albums in earlier now to get, like, the vinyl press and things like that. Mm-hmm. Therefore, maybe the ones that are more happiness in terms of outlook might not have, you know, might have been a little too late, potentially. But you, we don't know how, how Taylor was kind of feeling when she was writing them, but... Yeah, yeah, maybe you're think... right. Maybe we'll get more of a tolerated view than a happiness. Yeah, I think that's interesting how you've you've picked that up, like that we are literally going to be in the moment with her because we basically know that many of these songs were recorded during the Eras tour, during the first half of the Eras yeah. tour last year. And because obviously we could see Taylor going in and out of... Various studios. Recording studios, yeah. We also, she basically told us, you know, this is what I was doing. As soon as I gave in Midnight's, I did begin to kind of like the beginnings of, of this album were made until and basically throughout most of the american leg of the era's tour so it's interesting because we're very much going to see her processing everything that she wants to lay out for us Mm -hmm. and lyricize very much in real time so it's gonna definitely cut yeah i i really do think this is going to be masterful in the sense of really picking apart very terrible moments but giving them different spins because i do think there is going to be the sense of i don't know if it's towards the other person or towards like the relationship as a whole the the idea of happiness and the the ending of happiness but perhaps towards herself like with 
the quotes that she has given recently again in time and stuff you know she said she's very much betting Mm. on herself now which i think is going to be explored in this album i really do i think it's a theme that we're going to see of of her kind of like saying no you're on your own kid but you've got this you know so i think i think that's something that perhaps we're going to see a bit more of next up we have another couple of absolutely devastating songs i think um but yes these get if if these are references gonna be heavy hitters i think oh yeah definitely um and again, I think they go with the first few songs that we've mentioned in the sense that it kind of catches you up on a story, but it also gives, maybe gives lyrical parallels possibilities. So Cornelia mm-hmm. Street and Invisible String. And I think it is important yes, to but- kind of like see the the cutesy, lovey-dovey stories as well as we yeah come into definitely and, go into it all. and and even with Cornelia Street there is as we mentioned with Delicate there's still that anxiety yes. of like yeah. oh my god I hope you know I never lose you I hope this never ends like and if it does like it, she also then explains like how she would be physically unable to visit somewhere that you know she had previously visited with you know the person she's in the relationship with and yeah. I think that that is like and it's like will will she potentially mention that you know is that something that she might say like you know I can't I how, or she might even be like, actually, you know what? I can now because I've re, you know, written like my relationship with that place exactly. or you know that time in my life. And I think so. Yeah, there might potentially be a positive spin. I love it. that. I love that idea, and I, I have so much to say about that because you've just like illuminated so many light bulbs in my head. Firstly, <laughs> extremely interesting reference to a place, an Im- important place for her called Nina Street. And again, we have a, a, yeah. a reference to a very important place in this album, So Long London. And secondly, yeah. what you just said about her kind of rewrite writing memories or rewriting moments enabled to be able to like go on is very much what she kind of like discusses at the beginning of the era's tour like these songs may have once been about my life but now when you think about them in the future or even when she thinks about them in the future she can kind of re- she's gonna think about this night exactly yeah. she can like recategorize them into different moments and make new memories and that's again i think that is part of like the healing that we might be able to see in this album which i'm very excited for definitely Definitely. And then as for Invisible String, another one of my absolute favourite Taylor Swift songs. Oh, God, I love yes. the sound of it as well. Don't know if we'll get much of that. <laughs> Don't know, but um, <laughs> again, I think it, it's just, it, I think it's important to listen to just in case we get a very, very devastating lyric of, you know, fate wasn't what we thought it was. Yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. that string being cut, you know what I mean? That it came to an end. Yeah, mm. the string kind of, it, the string ended. It, you know, it wasn't um, a kind of infinite string or it was either cut or, yeah, mm. it yeah. broke. You know, I think, yeah, I think that'll be an interesting metaphor that Taylor might potentially explore. She might not. She's very good at re-referencing stuff that she's mentioned before. You know, even with Midnight's, the amount of stuff that's re-referenced there. Oh, for yeah. like red or out of the woods you know i mean that's really why we so, are compiling um, this playlist in a way like it's kind of like a prediction of what we think may be referenced in a way because she is so good at yeah. lyrically tying her songs together which is like meta discourse uh, of her talking to herself in her own lyrics which i absolutely love is something that she does so well the only one I've just realized (laughs) this is literally the only one (laughs) that we have from her first few albums is Holy Ground. I think we may have been influenced by that performance she did of it in Tokyo. Yes, I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah. But I I love it. I do think, again, this one would be more of a happiness kind of view of things. The exploration Mm. of a whole relationship or a whole moment in life that you were very much marked by and sitting down and looking back at it and reassessing it and thinking, well, the story's got dust on every page. However, let's explore that. Yeah, I think that's true. And and, and yeah, obviously then the thematic of like poet Mm. um, and then like, the story and i think also potentially um i know obviously this is slightly outside but you know it could kind of maybe cross like coincide with like the story of us which also yes. references is the physical song itself is like a book you know next chapter the end um so there might potentially be a play on with that you know with like stories got dust on every page or like you know the story's over or something like that so that might be something that might be referenced potentially but yeah i think thematically with yeah like looking back on a relationship that will definitely be something that's explored but i'm not sure about sonically as well i feel like maybe holy ground might potentially be like the way that she's going i'm, I'm kind of seeing like so hard. Kind of slightly red red production right. folklore vibe are you feeling i know that obviously someone's eclectic? said that and that was mm. yeah i feel like yeah more 
a bit more, of a mix of yeah, more of an eclectic sound. I think naturally because of the feelings it should be feeling will be so yeah. would be quite vast. You know, like naturally with like the end of a relationship or a breakup, you're kind of slightly all over the show, and hence read mm. the album is this just mosaic of just every kind of emotion, every kind of sound. And I'm not sure if maybe that might be something, or she might be the total opposite, and it might be a very distinct, you know, folklore kind of sound that's, you know, to a certain, you know, this is the sound, and that's kind of where it's anchored. An interesting one. I, I definitely think that a song to be mentioned here, perhaps it could go hand in hand with this exploration of... Uh, poetry and things is the torture poets department i really have high hopes for that song yes. because i don't think it's going to be so much of i hope anyway but i'll be happy either way you know mm. me but it would be really really yeah. fun if she kind of does do like an analysis as of herself as a poet and i think from the lyrics that mm. we have got like you know my muses acquired like bruises things like that i love that i love that imagery mm. and it'll be interesting to see her kind of like pick apart her own songwriting and how it can be yes. interpreted i don't know maybe i'm going way too into it just from like yes yes yes, yes 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 i like that mm, yes perhaps, that would be very interesting yeah oh, maybe yeah. her talking about that. how it acts as a defense mechanism how it acts as a way for her to project certain things i don't know maybe maybe but if she's ever going to mm. do it i think in a song like that it could could come out perhaps and that leads us actually that's a great segue into the lakes because it is yes. very <laughs> very thematically talk about poets exactly. this couldn't be more yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah again it, but it, again it intertwines her romantic feelings her her feelings of wanting to run away from everything wanting to escape the world yeah. escapism perhaps for different reasons because of when this this uh well it's from folklore right and that came out during the pandemic so it's very different reasoning yeah. to want to get away from everything but also she she did kind of express in this song that you know it is an escapism of everything of technology of people you know thrusting their opinions upon you and just like running yeah. away like and being a poet at the lakes so yeah and just living a very simplistic life and you know just dying that way dying in a natural kind of way you know with plants and ivy and growing over you yeah water yeah you know but, so maybe that might be something that's explored i think similarly with you know when folklore and stuff was teased and everyone was kind of grasping onto what potentially the sound and stuff might be and everyone clung to like safe safe and sound right yeah i feel like torture poets department the ones that people are kind of being like oh this is maybe what might be an insight of what we're getting is like you're losing me and the lakes lakes because of wow obviously just the references to poets and yeah, stuff and also right. you're losing me as being the most recent of what we know in terms of the relationship that's going to be most likely discussed mm. so yeah i think i think that the, these two are kind of the ones that people are kind of clinging to at the moment of like oh is this maybe potentially what we're going to get like a little bit of a teaser of what we might be hearing right yeah i i, I don't know it's a, such a vast difference though like the lakes is very like old timely produced yes and exactly. you're losing me has that production with the heartbeat and the string heartbeat yeah yeah not sure not sure I, I really can't tell honestly i can't i've stopped trying to guess with taylor anymore because sometimes the aesthetics know, are so different to what you hear like midnight's Obviously, from the full picture that we've gotten now, like everything that you see of the visuals yeah. of tour and the visuals from the MVs and the visuals of the album come together to form like this. I mean, it is quite, it's a collection of midnights, right? So it, it presents many different yes, facets yes. of one same person. However, if you just yeah. look at the albums, it, the they, photo shoots, it's like this tortured, like. Exactly, you know, it's very much. The the night, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like rolling around at night, can't sleep vibe. Which corresponds you know, whereas, to a few of the then, songs, but a lot of them are quite, yes, you know, <laughs> like bejeweled and stuff. Yeah, you know, like exactly. that is not that mm. kind of vibe. Whereas then the outfits that she's worn and stuff then makes then add to those that kind of sound. Definitely, so, bejeweled, yeah, like, it is shit. so hard. Yeah, definitely. And and with like previous releases, like at this point, we would have had a lead single, right? So we potentially have had at least some sort of insight into the sound, even if it isn't potentially what the rest of the album is going to sound like like for example we're never ever getting back together mm. the rest of red doesn't really sound like that but it's still an insight to a part of red like 22 exactly. or i knew trouble yeah um, and even thematically again going exploring, in blind. exploring yes. kind of terrible back and forth in a relationship and back and yes, forth in your life definitely yeah and the insecurity yeah. And then, whereas mm. you know 
we're going in so blind that it's like we could be being like yeah so it's gonna sound like yeah we, you know the lakes or everything we're this, saying is so much conjecture in, yeah we go in and it sounds like me you know what I mean? <laughs> like we have no idea what we're what well, we're kind of going up against Again, this is something that we're just doing based off of what Taylor has told us, based off of the track list. What she's kind of shared visually and track list wise. Exactly. Yeah. And kind of trying trying to tie these songs together to previous songs some way, somehow. We could be so off base that it's incredible. Um, but I guess the important thing will be finally being able to listen to this music. And again, as we always do, like exploring it very much lyrically and for the art that it is, rather than for mm. what it tells us about, you know, anything that may have happened yes. to her personally. We very much respect her as an artist, first and foremost. And I think that's an important thing to say as we do explore this list as well yes definitely yeah this is this is more out of what we want to hear sonically and what we want to hear lyrically um and hopefully some parallels rather than like gossip like exactly quite frankly care less yeah (laughs) we're more worried about like what it sounds like and just how interesting it is that taylor references previous work and you know and how we discuss like the family tree and how our previous work links and the connections you can make and we're trying to hopefully do that with this list and what connections might we be able to make to previous songs or references and like you said this kind of creates this whole kind of like sonic universe and how how these how these songs then link to the current sonic universe that's what we're kind of trying to explore and then of course the final step in that is when you take these songs on as your own and relate them to your own experiences and your own yes you know that's why i do hope there is like a mix of different things that a lot of people can sing and scream uh cathartically like we mentioned or other ones that you can just like Mm -hmm. quietly sit and reflect on and other ones that you can just bop to which i know it from the names and from how it's presented to us it's hard to think we're gonna get a bejeweled or we're gonna get something exactly yeah really be like vigilante shit exactly but i I think she'll she's i mean she's her bait and switches are extremely you know they're they're whiplashy i mean calling a song happiness and then it being this very very like depressive slow depiction of a, a failed relationship coming to an end and what that brings about uh so i don't know we can never know what to expect with her but it will be interesting. I mean, look at 1989, even though it's quite a heavy album, especially that Vault track, it, it gives you so yes. much like insight into anxieties and worries and darkness and feeling unwanted, but then feeling hopeful and, you know, really, really... Young waiting. and free. And, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then those names and that song production and the way the lyrics are written is just also... Yeah, it's just such a like clash of different things coming together that you can never tell with Taylor, to be honest with you. Next up, we have our 12th song, which is London Boy, which I think has to be here because of So Long London. Just the whiplash of it all, yes. like we mentioned before, right? Yeah, I think so. And I think that obviously, I think that this one is an essential one to listen to purely because we get to see what Taylor's previous relationship was with London and potentially the, her relationship now that she's going to explore and having to say goodbye to this relationship with London mm. that she explores in London Boy, which is very positive and fun and, you know, trekking around London and exploring all the different very English elements of the city. And now she clearly has to say goodbye to that. Oh, um, yeah. So I think obviously it's going to reference this song naturally, just th- the title already does um, without even really referencing anything that's said. But I think that this song is inessential because it will play a part in that song like it has to you know right yeah just again is very much i do think solo london could be a bit of a a mashup of like the feelings of cornelia street never be able being able to visit yes. somewhere because of how haunted you feel yeah. by it and letting go of those old haunts and these it, incredible memories you may have made in a song like london boy right all of these different places that you may have explored and then for one reason or another having to say goodbye to them and being like nope i'm packing up also it is a track five so be ready yes (laughs) be ready yes this this one is gonna be the hefty one definitely i'm a little bit scared we're in for a lot 
I know. Mm. I haven't. I totally. Obviously, I knew it was track five, but I had that. I'd, I'd forgotten that. So being reminded, I'm like, oh my god, this is gonna be death by <laughs> fire. You know, like, yeah. it's gonna be intense. <laughs> and then finally, last but not least, track thirteen or the thirteenth song on our playlist. Again, we have kind of putting them in a bit of a random order here because we just kind of like went through the ones that we thought would be best our my list your list combined them all together and we came up with the last one which is hits different a hits different for me i really do think that songs like hits different renegade and you're losing me and even dear reader when this after this album we're going to go back you know when certain songs with the re-recordings especially you listen to the mm. vaults and then you go back into the album and you're like oh my god the piece of the puzzle just fits How? now or yes. oh my god this lyric like, reference is so blatant yes. to this blue dress on a boat exactly. and it's like oh my god what how did i miss god, this yeah yeah that, yeah or or even like on red like i bet you think about me and we're never ever getting back together mm. like it's like oh my god like the you know indie record and things like that it shifts your yeah. view of certain things like castles crumbling and long live it, it yes. shifts like this is how taylor portrayed something but here is the other side of the coin that perhaps she didn't want to reveal at that point i know we're talking about vault tracks but it's a little bit different however i do feel hits different we are going to get the same sentiments of this song mm. in- interpreted in a very different way in another song i really do think so yes. also we can't ignore the you know the artifacts the, and how that yes. that's already been mentioned the evidence how that's already been made yes. reference to so interesting i think on that end as well yes definitely and and potentially maybe this song you could kind of link slightly to holy ground um in right. the way that it kind of it, it in like it's sonic i don't know in a way like it's kind of quite upbeat um, that's true um, weirdly positive even though aaron it's Dessner, kind of beloved. it has a yes yeah. yeah like get aaron on some pop tracks i want to hear please. more on aaron on pop tracks somebody call up aaron um, and tell him he can do pop aaron pop <laughs> yeah, girl please. era please yes we are praying but um but yeah that kind of like pop fun sound even though it weirdly has it is slightly quite heavy and even mm. though holy ground is quite fun it is also still quite heavy it's still looking back on a past relationship despite yeah. it being like oh no that was fun and i feel like hits different is kind of the same it's like it is quite heavy, but also if you just weren't really listening to the lyrics, you'd like, oh, this is a bit of a bop. Something that happens with a lot of Taylor's music is she is just so haunted by memories and the persistence of them yes. and how... I, I, The other day I thought, you know, we are Swifties. Of course we never let go of anything that has ever happened to us in all of our life. Yeah, because that yeah. is her music, yes. really, isn't it? And it's not a bad thing. I think that's perfectly valid. No. Uh, I think, yeah, to no. go back. I think that's and, why... Yeah why people do relate to her is because you know she makes your experiences feel valid and feel validated Mm. and like the writer of time the time sorry to keep referencing that but the writer of it was such a good article Mm. um but the writer of the time 100 piece uh, not time 100 sorry time person of the year piece he did say that you know that he realized why people love her so much is because she makes your feelings feel valid and if someone did make you feel rubbish then you are valid to feel that way you know and like you don't have to be like hide your emotion and it's acceptable and valid to be like, you know what? You treated me like a piece of shit and I feel bad about it and I'm going to feel bad about it for a little time. And Taylor kind of does make you feel valid. Yeah. I just keep saying the same bloody word, but you know, understood. Those emotions. Yeah, definitely. And I think that yeah, that is definitely true. So but- I think because we've spoken it, about it quite a lot, I think that if this is our essential listening, which I think, again, we've included a a good list of different kind of sounding songs, happier ones, sadder Mm. ones, things that we think may be mentioned thematically, symbolically, whatever. But perhaps we we could recommend listening to them as you read, once again, that timepiece, that last interview that she gave for, you know, being person of the year last year. Because I do think it's the most up-to-date information that we know of her and um, seen through a different lens and with this album being released. I think Mm. there's a lot that she may have mentioned that, maybe has flown a little bit under the radar that when we reread yes. we'll like, that makes sense now a bit like the what's it um nyc speech yeah. where she just she said like said loads lyrics. of midnight's lyrics yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely and obviously at the time you're just like okay what is that reference and then later makes so much sense mm. before we conclude perhaps it would be interesting here to just mention uh, a couple of things um because obviously as we near the album release we will get more information about the album that 
information sometimes can be real, sometimes it's not. By the time that this episode gets out, perhaps we will have got more information. We do try and update you guys through the community tab on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to us over there if you want to keep keep up to date. But if not, we try and mention everything in these episodes. One thing that we've recently found out is that even though the album wasn't being sold with a clean variant, we do know that there are explicit tracks on this album. They're going to be swear words, basically. And another thing that we can also mention, but this one is very much un- unreal. It looks like someone just kind of edited the Wikipedia page, took a screenshot of it and then posted it around, is the track lengths with So Long London yes. being like almost 10 minutes long. Nearly and, 10 minutes, yeah. yeah. Uh, at this point, we can't confirm that at all. It could it could yeah. be a random person who does know and then it all turns out to be true, but I don't think it's very realistic. No, I think it's similar to uh, Carolina, I believe, where that was supposed yeah, to be like, like about minutes. four hours long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely. And then, yeah. and then it turned out to not, it turned out to be about a normal length song. So yeah, definitely take that with a pinch of salt. I think um, also there was something the other day, I believe put on Spotify with the pseudonym that Taylor used for This Is What You Came For and there was some atrocious dodgy AI song called Torch Poets I think oh, okay. that was put up there so so there's lots that fly around like yeah, as, release as especially when we haven't got anything the release yeah I think that's true people get bored and I think restless people get bored and start making stuff up but yeah but that is interesting also quickly just before I kind of finish off I'll quickly mention some of the songs that we also included in our separate yeah, lists yeah. before we compiled them because um, they might add some extra pieces to the puzzle of where we were kind of looking and what our perspectives were um so some of the songs that i was thinking about was potentially king of my heart call it what you want afterglow lover and then referencing maybe something previous to like reputation i also thought about maybe you all over me in terms of that kind of narrative and outlook might be something that's maybe explored. even sound um and maybe even Sonic, yeah, definitely. And then some of the songs that um, Lisa put forward was Dear Reader, This Love, Sad Beautiful Tragic, and Tim McGraw. Okay, we've now come to the end of this episode. We hope that you enjoyed hearing all of our thoughts pre-Torture Poets department. Um, if you did enjoy, then please give this video um, a like over on YouTube and make sure to subscribe to us. Also, make sure to leave us a comment with the 13 songs that you think should be essential listening before the torture poets department if you're listening over on apple or spotify then make sure to rate us if you have enjoyed Um, and if you'd like to keep up with when episodes are coming out today and any kind of episode extras then please follow us over on instagram Um, our handle is at swiftly spoken podcast and until next time we'll see you then